Okay, guys, let's do a quick testing before we begin. Testing, testing, can you hear me through the webinar? We're all good? Okay, perfect. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our eLotus web webinar today. My name is Donna, and I will be your host and your moderator for today's class. Here at Lotus Institute of Integrative Medicine, we are the leading acupuncture CEU provider, offering the largest selection of CEU courses for our acupuncturists. So we are so glad to have you joining us today, especially if you're here looking to learn something that you can actually use in your practice and in your clinic. One of the ways that we help our TCM profession is with our one hour webinar weekdays such as today. They're free for you to attend and they're usually during the lunch hour during the weekdays. And if for any reason you're not able to join us, we do record them and you can find it on our TCM Wisdom too. They are made available the next business day. So if you wanna watch this class again, you can find it tomorrow afternoon. Today's class is Easy Orthopedic Tests with Dr. Hyung Suk Choi. And Dr. Choi is a top acupuncture clinician with over 24 years of experience specializing in musculoskeletal pain disorders. From Dr. Choi's experience working in South Korea's national public health care and as a university researcher alongside talented medical doctors and other scientists, his experience led him to develop an acupuncture technique called kinetic acupuncture. And if you want to learn more about it, he will be giving a full day class next year, one in January and another in March. So we do hope to see you guys there. And kinetic acupuncture is a technique based on modern science. Dr. Choi has boldly confessed that it gave him the freedom and clarity to his acupuncture career, and he's now there thrilled to share his technique with other and kinetic acupuncture is basically using acupuncture points and then having the patient move for a better uh, better result so but today we're going to talk about orthopedic tests so let's go ahead and give a big welcome to dr choi hello everyone today we will talk about special test in orthopedic examination. This lecture will make your orthopedic test very easy and change your perspective about orthopedic test. Let me start with a couple of questions. First, is it positive? She can manage to drop her arm slowly, but it is quite painful and she tried to support her arm with other hand. So she can manage to lower, but it is painful and she is kind of scared. So this is a simple drop arm test, but this is a real practice situation. So what do you think? Is it positive? And next, this is a drawer test and Lachman's test for examining ACL tear. There is no increased transition, not on one tenth of an inch, but there is significant pain. What do you think? Is it a positive sign? Next. Maybe this special test is the most well-known special test in orthopedic examination. SLR test, straight leg raising test. Let's suppose patient come to you with back pain and tingling on the right calf. With the SLR test, patient show pain and tightness, but the pain quality is not clear. It is not the tingling or radiating, but patient just say it is tightening. And patient cannot raise right leg more than 30 degrees without pain. So it's kind of ambiguous. It is a neuropathic pain or nociceptive pain. And she says, actually, there are a lot of patients who says, I'm really stiff. This is normal. So it makes you hard, hard to decide if it is neuropathic or nociceptive. What is happening with straight leg raising? 
is in the low back, not in the back of your thigh. When my students perform the SLR test, they try to lift the leg and they focus on the back of the thigh. So it is intuitive. Straight leg raising is relevant to tightening of hamstring. But SLR test is all about nerve root entrainment. When you lift patient leg, you are pulling siding nerve. Can you understand that? So you are pulling this siding nerve that makes the entrainment of nerve root is irritated more. When I clean my living room with my vacuum cleaner, I always end up with tangled power cable. It is always stuck middle of somewhere. Sometimes leg of a chair or sometimes leg of table or part of tre trees. Then, what do you think if I pull this cable hard? This leg will be irritated. And this nerve will be irritated too. So you should be able to connect these two dots. It seems irrelevant, irrelevant, but raising leg is correlated to nerve entrainment irritation. By pulling sciatic nerve, you are irritating entrapped nerve itself. This is the principle of straight leg raising test. If you understand this kind of principles, it can make you, your orthopedic test a lot more specific and sensitive. Increased accuracy. First, it changes the interpretation. You can interpret a lot more precisely. You can interpret the result right only when you understand the mechanism behind. So, Today's lecture, I will focus on the mechanism, not the detailed maneuver. And second, first, we can interpret precisely with understanding, and but also we can perform correctly. It's really important. Understanding is the best way to memorize all the steps of complicated special test. Special tests look very complicated sometimes. There is a certain angles and positions. Sometimes there is a special grips. But those things are not something you should memorize. You should understand first. Then those steps will come to you just naturally. And they are dancing. Just memorizing dancing steps does not make you a good dancer. But my student, and I was there too, trying to memorize all the complicated steps and the positive signs. That is the reason you cannot get right result with orthopedic test. So let's go to the fundamentals. Why do we do the test? purpose of the test. Frankly, many of the students didn't understand these basic questions. When they do the test, they just do it because, because they just learned it. That doesn't make sense. Orthopedic tests, including special tests, are solving mystery box. We are finding something inside of the box. So if you want to know what is inside of the box, you can shake the box, right? Or you can lift it to see how heavy it is. These are physical examinations. Through these physical examinations, you can guess what it is inside. So first one is knowing what is inside. And second, you should know more than just naming the disease. Let's suppose 
there is a cat in the mystery box, but also in addition to the name of the disease, the cat, you also have to know how fluffy is the cat or high, how heavy is the cat. Maybe how wild is the cat? How can you get that information? You may just throw the box and see the response, how wild it is. That is the physical examination. Orthopedic test tells you where is the problem. So first, you are finding out the location of the injury. Second, the state of injury, how bad it is. So you are finding these solutions besides just name of the disease. And this kind of information, finding out the uh, disease and sta states, will help you choose better acupuncture point. You can treat neck of the pain, neck of the patient when they complain finger tingling or finger radiating. With proper orthopedic test, if you find out their problem, problem lies in their neck, you can treat their neck more cautiously with a top priority. And you can release muscles when they have a tendon problem, like a tendinitis. When they have a wrist tendinitis, you can treat their muscles. It only can happen with exact diagnosis with proper orthopedic test. So it will help your acupuncture practice. And TCM is the medicine of care and management. Do you agree? Yes, it is. You can set up proper treatment plan and treatment schedule. Just saying, just come to me twice a week, maybe not enough. You can set up proper time schedule for the patient and you can predict correctly. And more importantly, you can instruct the patient proper, correct home care. And that can help the patient recover faster and better. Then what we are testing, what we are testing, it looks like we are testing a bunch of our structures in our body, but it is not. It's kind of simple. This is the hinge joint. Most of the joint we have is hinge joint. There's a bow and socket joint, shoulder and hip, but elbow, wrist, and knee and ankle, those are all hinge joints. So understanding hinge joint is the basic. Wrist is saddle joint, but that is out of the form of hinge joint. So the hinge joint is consists of two bones. And in between two bones, there is cushion-like material. Sometimes it is called disc, meniscus, or sometimes cartilage. So it works as a shock absorber. And this black line is ligament. Ligament is a stabilizer. It stabilizes the joint. And this red line is muscle and tendon. This structure moves the joint. So this red muscle and tendon is kind of a cylinder or pumps in your body. So by attaching to bone, it moves the muscle, moves the bones. And there is nerve too. So it is simple. Ligament, tendon and muscles, cartilage, and nerve. These are the most plausible culprit we are looking for. So you don't have to be overwhelmed. The culprit is one of them. So location, where is the problem? Ligament or tendons? And the state? Inflammation, how bad it is. So these are the culprit. Have you ever played Cluedo? I love this game. This is my favorite game. And this is the mother weapon. This is the culprit. These are the culprit. So it is lucky. Only the suspect, the suspect are limited, these five. And these are the common conditions. So you are finding something inside of mystery box 
and something inside of mystery box is limited. How lucky you are. You can easily guess what that is. So this was fundamental of fundamentals. Only thing remaining is how to perform the test. So you know why you are doing the test and why what you are looking for. But next one is how you do perform the test. This performing wise may be so far you have learned orthopedic test only focused on this way, how to perform the test. But what I told you right now is more important. Why we are doing the test and what we are testing. Then let's go back to this techniques, how we do the test. It, we are very fortunate. There is only one and only principle. One and only principle. That is representing the problem. That problem is mostly pain. It's very simple. All the special tests in orthopedic examination follow this one and only principle. Can you see her wicked face, wicked smile? If it is the injury of something, this action will produce the pain. That is something you should do in your practice. That is only one and one and only rule. Please remember this. That is the reason why we call special test as provocative test. Because everything is about provoking the pain. I told you there is only one rule, provoking, and the second, there is only two ways of provoking. It's really easy, one rule and two method. That two way is stretching and pressing. Let me introduce my friend. I think his name is Steve. A stretch. This is the one way we can stretch and test some structures. And here's another door. We can press it and we can test some tissues. This is, these are the only two ways. First, we can stretch extraarticular structures and we can test intraarticular structures by pressing it. This is the typical hinge joint. Ligament is here, ligament is here, and muscle and tendons here, right? You, if there is an injury, you can test these structures by stretching it. Please think about it. If there is a wound, if you stretch it, it will hurt. That is the way of provoking. And if there is an injury on a tendon, if you stretch it, there will be a pain. But there is some structure between these two bones. How can you stretch the structure? You can't. So the only, only remaining way is pressing it. By pressing it, you can provoke the pain because there is an injury. Those are the only two methods in all the hundreds of sp special tests in orthopedic examination. So by stretching, we can test the ligament, tendons, and muscles. And by compress, rub, pinch, tap, we can check, examine catalyst bones and nerves. These are the only two ways. First stretching test, ligament. All the virus vargus tests fall into this category. Do you remember the virus vargus test? This is the virus stress if there is a force from insi inside, the lateral ligament, oh, this is the vargus test. The, the medial ligament is torn. This is the mechanism injury. You can easily see that, right? Intuitively understand if there is a force, this will be cut. This is the mechanism in of injury. A lot happens with ski or skating. This is the virus virus stress test. Give a force here, 
medial ligament is torn. So it makes positive sign. This is a varus stress, so lateral ligament, collateral ligament shows the response. It's very easy, isn't it? And this is a wrist varus valgus stress. If you flex this way, the pain is present here, and this is the same. It looks very easy. It's, this is one of the most easiest special tests. And this is called Tala tilt test, but basically this is ankle varus test. So you are stretching the ligament here. So if you stretch this ligament here, there is positive sign. And this is the elbow varus varus test. So you can apply this simple procedure to everywhere. So remaining is interpretation. These four tests, all varus varus tests, the remaining is interpretation. Before we talk about interpretation, let's talk about terminology first. Tear, sprain, strain, and rupture. We usually think sprain is just mild condition and rupture is a very serious condition. But all these conditions are referring to same one condition, tear. They are all tears. This is Achilles tendon, and this is the ankle ligament. When there is minor tear partially, it is grade one tear, it is called sprain and strain. And if it is complete tear, we call this usually rupture or complete tear. And this is the grade two tear uh, in the middle. So wherever it is, ligament or tendon, the basic pathology is tear. So please don't be confused with terms. So please remember everything is tear and this is only difference with severity. This is the whole spectrum of severity from grade one to grade two, three. So let's go back to the interpretation. What is the pos positive sign of torn ligament? Can you see this destroyed gene? These genes have a the rag like tone on a knee. I asked my wife, why do you wear such a jeans? And she told me it is extremely comfortable. Of course it is comfortable because it is torn. So she is having vargus stress, right? Vargus stress, but gene it is torn completely, it moves freely. That's what happens when you give a vargus stress, vargus stress in the other side of the ligament. So first sign of Vars Vargus test is hypertransition, hypermobility, or gapping. So this is not something you memorize. You can easily understand them. Increased transition. So when you do the Vars Vargus test, the ligament loses the stability and it moves more. And if it is grade three tear, the gapping is really severe. But what if it is just grade one tear? It is not on the textbook. Textbook says gapping is the major positive sign. But what if there is only one grade one tear? That means sprain. There is no hypertransition, increased transition. This is the grade one tear, stretched ligament there will be only pain. So pain is the positive sign too. And this is maybe kind of new to you. There is examiner side feeling. I prepared something. Mm. This is some stretch string I use. When this rope is solid and healthy, when you pull it, you can feel distinct end point. When you pull it, you feel it is the end. But suppose it has one out and half tone. When you pull it, 
you may feel, oh, if I put more, it will be cut. Or you cannot feel the distinctive, this kind of end feeling. We call them soft and mushy feeling. That is altered practitioner's feeling. That means that ligament, that wire, cable is worn out and wounded. So first, this is the healthy ligament. You can feel very distinctive end feeling, just like this though. So these three things are the positive signs in all the ligament stretch test. First, patient pain. In the real practice, this is the most common condition. You will not see many of these instability problems. And practitioners' altered end feeling is important too. So, Varus Vargus test looks very simple, but interpretation can be a little bit complicated. And this kind of ac accurate interpretation only comes to you when you understand the test fully. This is the question. What would you do for testing finger collateral ligament? It's simple, right? Can you answer? Can you? Maybe you already know that. It's really easy. The collateral ligament is wounded, then you can test by just flexing it. Just like this. Giving virus virus stress, giving this stress, this part of ligament is stretched and there will be pain or soft muscle feeling or if it's complete tone, they will show hypermobility. You can apply this principle all hinge joint you have. So orthopedic test is as simple as it is. Tendons. Tendon can be a little bit complicated but almost same as ligament test. I'm sorry. Tendon is examined by stretching, but only difference is resisting. Because tendon is the moving part, you cannot stretch the tendon easily. So would you come to the desk? It'll be really quick. I'll just a couple of tests. Is it okay if you sit here? So this is a very common tennis elbow test. Tennis elbow happens lateral epicondyle. And it is called lateral epicondylitis, but actually it is not the inflammation on a lateral epicondyle that means bony structure. But this is the problem with the tendons, group of tendons. So it is called tendinosis or tendonitis. Anyway, the problem happens here, the tendon attachment here, they have a they can have active inflammation or just a tendon, tendinopathy. They have a wound here, and the way of examining this tendon integrity is stretching it. It happens with this kind of dorsal flexion of the wrist. When you do the backhand, it gets repetitive stress and it is wounded. But if you want to stretch it, you can just do it this way, but the pain doesn't reproduce to here. Why? Because muscle is compensate. Muscle compensates the stretch. When you try to stretch this tendon, muscle stretch more. So this part doesn't is not affected. So what you should do is please gently make a fist and try to resist my force and try to do the dorsal flexion. Try it? Try it. This way. Okay, this way. Just keep it. Then her muscle here, there is a flexor muscle group, is shortened. And the tendon here is stretched. Can you see that? So if she has a tendinitis, she would feel the pain around this lateral epicondyle. And if there is no pain is presented, you should change the angles. Try to flex different angles and resist in different ways. By doing this, you can increase the sensitivity. 
because it, this is a tendon group, muscle group, the response can happen in various angles. Sometimes in the pinky side, sometimes thumb side. You should, write, you should try it in various ways and try to resist it. Try it and see if the pain is represented here. Okay, please sit here <laughs> just, just a couple of scenes. So actually this is the te tendon injury mechanism. When muscle contract attached to tendon pulled away like this and it makes the pain and that is the MOI2, the mechanism of injury 2. And this is the Cosens test, the, ten the tennis elbow test, and this is the golfer's elbow test. It has the same principle, but totally different side, different side, opposite side. I told you tennis elbow happens with this action because muscle is tightened and tendon is stretched. Golf elbow happens with this action, plantar flexion. So it is also called pitcher's elbow because pitchers throw a ball like this and this plantar repeated plantar flexion make a wound here. So test is the same. You can, uh, if you understand the principles, test is really simple. Let's grab. You tested tennis elbow this way, go for the elbow, just turn and try to flex the wrist inside. Try it. And I resist. Pain should be produced here. Do you feel pain? No? Okay, she doesn't have golfer's elbow. And if you sensitize, you suspect the golfer's elbow and you want to sensitize the maneuver, let the patient grab the fingers and you resist it like this. So this is the sensitizing manner. Man manner. So by doing this, you are the patient are contracting the muscle group here and tendon attached medial epicondyle is stretched. Thank you. Hold on a second, please. So this is a tennis elbow. This is a golfer's elbow test. And this is a job test. It tests supraspinous tendon. Same mechanism. We are contracting the supraspinous and stretch supraspinous tendon. This is the supraspinous and this is the torn tendon. If the tendon is torn, when the supraspinous muscle is contracted, this wound produces the pain. So the action of supraspinous is raising the shoulder, especially around the 90 degree angle. When she does this action, she is using supraspinous. And if I resist, raising, tr try it. If she feels the pain here, that is the sign of supraspinous tendon or muscle injury. Am I right? But you can make her hand shape like this. We call this empty can. We can increase the sensitivity. But many researchers say that full can or empty can doesn't make any difference. But usually they say the empty can is the proper way, but it is not that important. That is the lesson of today too. So try to raise the shoulder. I resist it if the pain is reproduced here. What if this tendon is completely torn? What do you think? Of course there is pain, but she cannot even move because it's completely torn. You can understand the right. Huh? So when you examine the complete tear, you just do drop on test. Here I resisted actively, but here only gravity is holding, pulling, and you are resisting the gravity. So when you have a complete tear, you cannot hold it. So they show this kind of response. Because it is seriously torn, they just hold it because they are scared. Or they just drop it and say, ah, what are you doing? And the, you, you'll hear some swears. <laughs> okay, thank you for a minute. <laughs> thank you. So this is the supraspinous tendon tear. And 
with cogent test, job test, and golfer's elbow test, we are doing same thing. So I told you, job test and drop arm test is basically the same test. And the reason we are using both shoulder is to compare with a healthy side. And this is a Thompson test. Uh, I don't think we can have a time to explain this, but it is very interesting actually. Thompson test and drop arm test is actually same test. If you see here, this is the complete rupture of the Achilles tendon, and this is the complete tear of a supraspinous tear. They have the same pathology, and the maneuver of testing is the same too. So let me jump into the positive signs of tendon tear. Patient pain while resist is the typical tendon stretch test positive sign. And if the tear is severe, they lose the weakness, the, the strength. So they show motor weakness and muscle weakness. If you think about the functions of ligament and tendons, that is so just natural. The ligament function is stability. So when ligament is wounded, stability has the problem. So there is a hypertransition and gapping. And when the tendon and muscles have a problem, they cannot move properly. They lose the strength and they have a trouble in moving. So this is the provoking guide. We did this part. So we went through half of the test, something surrounding ligament, tendons, and muscles. Tennis elbow, jumpers, knees, Hawkins test, Filkenstein's test, there are hundreds of tests using this simple principle. I only introduced just archetypes of the stretch test, but there are a lot using the same principle. I will have a chance to explain all these tests later. And something in between, college bones and nerves, we can test them with other ways. And that is very interesting too. That is pressing test. So this is the pill butter. How do you open the pill butter? Press and rotate. Exactly same maneuver with the same maneuver, you can test the cartilages and bones and disc. So sharpest test for testing TFCC, magmorase test for meniscus, and patella grinding test of patella pathology, we use this simple maneuver, press and rotation. This is a typical press and rotation maneuver. So can you see this little friend here? If I have uh, this doll around my slide, that means that this is the press test. And this test examines the meniscus between femur and tibia. So it is a structure in between. There is no way to stretch it. So just press like a pill bottle and rotate it. It is a textbook explanation. But the location of tear can be very lot. And sometimes the severity can be very a lot too. There is the problem. Just following press and rotation doesn't make a good test. Let me show you. Maybe this is the second last thing. Can you lie down on your tummy here? Here, right? So orthopedic test is not something you can do it. Uh, I can do that. <laughs> something you can do it by memorizing the steps like a guidebook. But it is some procedure you should do based on your intuition, sometimes the feelings. Yes, please. No, I'm not doing any intuitive 
uh, I'm not doing any uh, invasive one, so please just relax. So meniscus is in between these two bones, right? So by flexing and compressing, you can give uh, stress to the meniscus itself. And by rotating, internal rotation, external rotation, that makes the rubbing stress there. So should feel the pain when I do this. But think about the injury on a meniscus. Sometimes it can be on a lateral side, sometimes it can be on a medial side. Then just rotate, push and rotating, do you feel the pain? That is not a test. Think about the mystery box. You are carefully shaking and listen to the sound inside. You should press and give a little bit more stress on the lateral side and give a rub. And medial side, give a rub. At a certain point, she feels kind of twitching. Oh, there, you, can, you should notice there is a problem there. And give a little bit of angle changes. Can you see how I tweak the my movement? This is the right applies compression test. By doing that, you can dramatically increase the sensitivity and specificity of this simple test. So do you have a meniscus problem by any chance? No. no okay. Then I'll press hard. Hard and change the direction and give a rub internally and externally. The Pressure, amount of pressure should be different from patient individual too. Okay, hold on a minute. I will explain this slide first. This is the memorized test, and you think, many of my students think this is a very complicated test, but it is not. It is exactly identical test with compression test. I'm not joking, it is. Once you heard my explanation, you will understand. By giving varus stress, you are giving compression in a medial meniscus. And this flexion and extension is rubbing, rubbing stress. Here, this is the lateral collateral ligament and this is the medial collateral ligament. When you give a stress to this direction, this is a varus stress, this collateral ligament is stretched. But when you do this movement, this side of intra-articular structure, like meniscus, is compressed. You can see that, right? It is simple. So this stress, in a magmarized test, doing this stress is way of a compression. Can you see this though, right? So with a simple movement action, you can inducing two different results. So let me show you. Please lie down on your back. So so Magmaray's test is one of the most challenging tests for many of the students. But once you understand the principle, it is easy. The problem is the mechanism behind. By doing this varus stress, give a varus stress, you are making the space here tighter. And give an internal rotation usually, and but you can give an external rotation too. That is the way of irritating. So make it joint space tighter and rub it. It is the same mechanism with the compressed and rubbing. But you are feeling, you, your hands should be located at the joint line. Because meniscus is located here, joint line. And make the space tighter. This is making wider. This is making tighter to the lateral side. And this is making tighter in the medial side. If you want to check the lateral side, make this angle and give a rubbing. So, so when I teach this technique to my students, they do just this kind of flexion and extension. You cannot tell. Make a space tighter and see the response on your fingertip and patient expression and give a more rubbing and 
rotate the ankle and give more rubbing, then at a certain point, patient can feel locking or pain, or practitioner can feel the friction. So this is just like uh, solving a mystery box, and that procedure needs your great concentration, not just following the steps. So it is easy. Just making the space tighter, lateral side or medial side, and give a rubbing. This is the principle behind memorized. Thank you very much. There, there, there are only one left. Is it okay if I finish maybe 10 minutes over? Maybe 20 minutes? It's your precious lunch time. Okay, this is lateral meniscus tendon examination, uh, the lateral meniscus examination. And this is a Sharpie's test. Sharpie's test examines the articular disc. Here, here, uh, can you see? Here, here is something like meniscus between ulla and carpal bone. That is called TFCC, articular disc. So when they have a wound, injury on a, this articular disc space, you can test it with just compressing and rubbing. Can you see here? Just compress and rub it. By doing that, you can induce the pain here. That is the positive sign of TFC, TFCC injury. And this is the wrist compression test. You can think about the applied compression test, right? The shape is almost the same. Giving a ulla deviation and give a pressure. Then pain should be presented here. That is the positive sign because this is intra-articular structure. Then, what do you think? Can you test the meniscus this way too? How do you think? Given lateral side compression and rubbing, you can. If you are huge giant, like a Yao Ming, you can test that way. But ordinarily, you cannot. But that is the principle behind the test. So you should be able to the common point of these four tests. They all look different. By, but they are using one same principle, pressing it. So positive sign of cartilage bones and the disc meniscus, patient pain with compression. This is the most important common sign and locking friction and instability is another sign. But they usually show instability because of pain. Because of their pain, they should, oh, it is hard to move. Oh, I, can, I cannot hold it. And deep, unspecific pain around the joint line is another positive sign. Any questions so far? Okay, let's talk about the nerves. Nerve is a little bit complicated. You can test the nerve injury by pressing, pinching, and tapping. Tapping is the easiest one. These are all tinnitus sign. I think you already learned this. When you suspect carpal tunnel syndrome, you just tap it. Tap on the median nerve. And when you suspect an ulnar nerve injury, you can tap here. And tarsal tunnel syndrome, you can tap here. So it is very simple and intuitive, straightforward. As long as nerve path through right under the skin. So it's very easy to understand. And this is cervical compression test. Give a direct compression on the spine, combine lateral bending and rotation and extension. What you do with this is giving direct compression and literally squeezing the disc bulged out. Can you see? Squeeze the disc 
and it will burst out and irritate the nerve root more. So they are showing the radiating pain to the side. And this is called CAMPS test. Basically, CAMPS test examine the facet joint pathology. So it is just compressing and rotating, same principle, examining facet joint problems, but also it can test nerve root entrainment with the same mechanism. Pressing and squeezing out the herniated disc and giving radiating, radiating to the injured side. So CAMPS test is the lumbar version of cervical compression test. And this is the SLL test. We came here again. This is a sensitizing manner, sensitizing maneuver, flexing, bending the patient's neck. And this is the leg raising. These two actions have a meaning. First, I told you raising leg is pulling sciatic nerve toward the bottom. And raising head is the action of pulling dura mater of spinal cord toward the head. That is just like pulling the string from both ends. Then what will happen? This nerve root will be tightened, irritating herniated disc. That is happening with your SL test. And this one is slump test. Actually, slump test is identical test with the SLL test. First start with bending the back and bending forward the neck and lifting the leg. The strength of a slump test is this is the sequential procedure. You can stop anywhere the patient feel the pain. So by bending neck, you are pulling dura mater of spine this way, and by lifting the leg, you are pulling sciatic nerve toward the bottom. That makes the irritation here. So I told you the compressing the spine with cervical compression test and CAMPS test. By compressing it, birds disc go out and irritate the nerve. And by stretching it, you can reproduce the pain too with this SLL test and slump test. Interpretation of neuropathic pain can be a little bit complicated. You should be able to differentiate neuropathic pain from nociceptive pain very clearly with many patients. First, location. Neuropathic pain can happen in different locations from the injured site. Injured site is low back but tingling and radiating can happen in the calf or even pinky. But nociceptive pain usually happen in the injured site. Beside the referred pain, but I will have a chance to explain referred pain later. But basically local injured area is the basic pain quality. And pain quality wise, radiating shooting tingling sensation, you should consider that as a positive sign and this is very important too. These are the positive signs of nerve test, reproduction of chief complaint. Let's think the patient came to you with a left side leg tingling or tightening. When you do the SLL test or slump test, if that tightening is reproduced, your test is very reliable. So when you do the SLL test or slump test, do not only focus on the existence of pain, but you should focus on the quality of the pain. If the chief complaint is reproduced, that is a very specific result. You can think it is very correct diagnosis. And neuropathic pain quality. Many people misunderstand this neuropathic pain quality. Neuropathic pain quality is just the pain when you have a dental treatment. There's a just simple soft touch. It makes you cry, right? That is very sudden and very clear sensation. That is hap happening when you do SLL test or slump test. So at a certain point, patients should feel the radiating or shooting. That is very reliable sign. But if the patient says 
just the tightening of hamstring, maybe that is not the positive result. So how to interpret, make the test result totally different? Sometimes the SL tests have a great high specificity, but sometimes they can have a very low specificity. And pain on remote area is the one of the sign of the nerve injury. So please remember these three things when you test nerves. So here is a question. If you answer those questions, that means you are understanding my lecture correctly. Presentation of pain on pinky with tapping on median nerve. So that means I try the tinea sign on a carpal tunnel syndrome, but pain is reproduced on the pinky side. The patient says to you, oh, here's a tingling but on my fi both two fingers. Is that a positive sign? What do you think? Can you see any answers there? I'm sorry? They are just typing, okay. Okay? Yeah, it is, it is not. Thank you very much. The pinky side tingling is not the innervation of median nerve. So just existence of pain doesn't mean positive sign. You should perform cervical compression test or general history taking again. Maybe there is a number seven cervical disc herniation. So that is the difference in between knowing the principles or not. So almost we are at the end of the lecture. We finished something surrounding and something in between. Something surrounding ligament tendons muscles, we test those by stretching it. And these tissues inside the be between the joint we test them by compressing and rubbing. Let me end my lecture with some questions. It will make you understand more deeper why raising head is the sensitizing, sensitizing maneuver. Because by raising head, bending neck, you can increase the dura pressure by pulling the spinal cord. That can irritate nerve root entrainment. And second, why health leg raising is positive when entrainment happened in the middle or is big enough? Why do you think so? Why do you think so? Can you help me with just one more time? Let's suppose this, these are the siding nerve, and siding nerve is located on both sides, and this is the spinal cord. Please lie down on your back. And this is the bird's disc, and this bird's disc is irritating her. Please lie down, just relax on her right side. There's a bird's disc, and here's a siding nerve. By raising leg, I'm pulling this siding nerve, and it will irritate that bird's disc, right? Then what happens when I lift this side of leg? I pull this siding nerve, pain is transit to here. What does that mean? Because that bird's disc located in the middle center of the spine, it can affect both sides. So by just pulling, irritate this side of entrainment too. Or that bird's disc is big enough, so when I pull this side, that is affected too. And this is another sensitizing manner when you do a SL test or slump test. Slump test basically involves the flexion of dorsal flexion of ankle. When I told that my student to flex their ankle, they push this way and check if there is a pain, tightening. 
of course there is a tightening. You are very flexible. <laughs> but most of the people feel the tightening here. This is not the way of producing the pain on a nerve root. I told you it, it is like a dental procedure. So you are touching the nerve with this by pulling it. So just light snap is enough. And just change the direction and angle and see if there is any radiating or neuropathic quality of pain. Thank you. Just one more thing. Please sit down facing the camera. And this is the last one. So I, I wish this question would give you aha. And this is the ankle ligament tear. This one is injured a lot too. This ligament prevent anterior transition of ankle because it is located the fibrotalo ligament. So if it is complete torn, they will lose stability. What can you do the test? The point is here. I hope you can understand the test and you can guess what kind of test I should do. Even if we, we you never learned that test before. You know the ACL test tear examination with drawer test. Same. We do the drawer test here. Do you know what happened? Shiri answered me. <laughs> yeah, hey Siri. <laughs> drawer test give a anterior transition, that means complete tear. I wish most of you guys get the right answer. This is the most important one. This is a simple pinky side bending. When you do the simple pinky side lateral bending, there are some actions happens, just like a knee. On the some side, there is a stretch. Can you see this stable here? Is it stable, right? And there is a compression with this doll. This two action with a simple one movement. So I told you this is the last one. So patient come to you after this lunch hour. When she complained the wrist pain, try these examinations. When you flex this way, pinky side, if the pain is present, what is the problem? This is the wrong question. There can be an anywhere the pain presented. First, if the pain presented here, this is the ligament tear, right? You can test ligament by giving a stretch. But with the same action, if the patient complains of pain around here, that is the problem is the structure in between. Usually this side, TFCC. So this is a TFCC compression test. So simple action, ULA deviation, same action, but you can test ligament, ligament the ULA couple ligament, and also TFCC structure. And most common one is, but most common one is this polycystic brevis tendon injury. What do you call that? The Gravens disease. They have a pain on the wrist. In most of the cases, it is the Gravens disease. Then how can you test this tendon? Just pulling doesn't stretch this tendon enough. So usually, let them do this way. By doing this, you can increase the tendon stretch more. To isolate the tendon stretch, you can just pull this way. This is the Filkenstein test too. We usually call this classic Filkenstein test because by doing this, involve the stretch of the ulocapa ligament. So without ulocapa ligament, you are just pulling its brevis tendon. So simple ulla side deviation lateral bending to the pinky side can tell many stories. T 
TF cyst tear, the Degrebing's disease, and even the, this is rare, but ulocarpal ligament tear. And if there's only pain that is grade one tear, if it shows much of a laxity or a transition, that is a complete tear. So just simple tests tell you many things. What if the pain is induced when I do the thumb side bending, pain is present here? That can happen to your patient. It is not that rare. Scaphoid bone fracture. In those cases, you should palpate, palpate the scaphoid. And if the pain is present on the pinky side, that means ligament tear. So these simple actions can tell you many, many informations. Right? OK, thank you. <laughs> it's all done. So this is the Finkenstein test. Orthopedic tests are not a uh, communication between two humans. This is the summary and the most important thing understanding orthopedic test. It is not all about for the result like a lab test or imaging test whole process, entire context matter. So it is not something you should get with uh, one communication, one-sided communication. It includes emotions and subjective feelings, and feelings and patient response like twitchings or expression of changes. You should be focused on those all the details. And patients are all different, and responses are not all the same. So special tests in orthopedic examination actually very intuitive procedure. And it needs a communication. You can get just the information as much as you understand. Tr the only th the one and only thing I want to assure you today is visualize what is happening when you do the test. When you do the magmoray test, visualize the pathology you are looking for inside of the patient knee. When you shake the mystery box, you should visualize something inside. And better understanding of orthopedic test can help your TCM practice in both treatment and management. By getting exact diagnosis will give you very precious information, treat the patient correctly. And all the pictures here in, in this presentation are in, uh, in my book, Orthopedic Test Made Easy. And there is a more detailed explanation about the other test I didn't introduce here or maybe later, I can introduce all the detailed steps with principles uh, based on location, like a knee orthopedic test or low back orthopedic test. And more important thing is how to connect acupuncture treat to the test result. Okay, that's it today. Thank you for your precious lunch time. Thank you, Dr. Choi, for a great class today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. I hope you found something useful that you can apply in your clinic. The recording for today's class will be available tomorrow afternoon on our TCM Wisdom 2 if you would like to watch again. And as Dr. Choi mentioned, he does he just came out with a book on orthopedic tests. So you can, where can they get a copy of the book? Amazon. You get it on Amazon, all right? So um, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much, and have a great rest of your day. Bye.